right, Engineer 775, it's early Monday morning. Well, it was raining like crazy, so we're a little delayed, but we're loading up for another out of town job. We've got our batteries, battery rack, air conditioners, tools, solar panels, inverters. Uh, we're loaded down, heading to Georgia. Got Nathan along helping us for three days on this job. And uh, which is going to help us. We just loaded his truck up to the max. Tools, inverters, all sorts of goodies, plywood backings. Uh, got a few more things put on. We'll get this thing strapped. But we are heading down the road. About three hours. Seems like we averaged. Wish we had some closer work, but anyway. About three hours out of from home base. I uh, got my new tires on my trailer. Psyched about that. I got 12 years out of my other ones, but we're uh, feeling safer today. And we're off. Where are we going, boss? South. And we're going south. It's a ter perfect time to go south. It's yeah. February. And we're going to be climbing through crawl spaces and attics and things. All right, now I got plenty of room. I can fill up the back of my truck. All right, but this is part of doing a solar job is thinking ahead and how we're going to load the trailer to get everything. Get the So we got the entire job with us. Panels and racking and batteries and inverters and battery racks and tools and peoples and hand trucks. So um, we'll, uh, we'll see you down at the job site. Day one of another solar installation. Everyone is custom, everyone is different. We have, um, I'll tell you a little bit about the batteries. Oh, you've seen these on my uh, Canadian installation or my northern climate installation. These are the North Star 210 amp hour, 16 of those babies. And the nice breaker rack. We are gonna, I'm not gonna keep it here, I think I'm gonna move it. But we came in here and we put our plywood up for mounting our wiring troughs, solar inverter critical loads panel is going to go on that wall and then a battery i'm probably going to move over here so we're putting all of this in a garage we're also adding a mini split to this wall this is going to be climate insulated and climate controlled when we get done uh, using the ac dc 12c solar air conditioner 12 panels i'll show you the roof in a bit but out here we've going to we're gonna run a couple two inch conduits from the corner where the solar arc is, and we're gonna come up and put it on this building. So Abraham and Nathan are doing a layout, snapping some lines. I'm so excited, we're gonna be using uh, the Everest system, the Everest mini rail system, and um, we haven't used it before, but we've heard a lot of cool things. Just the ease of installation, not having to use racking per se, long racks. And uh, we'll show you that up in, up close. So we're gonna be bringing the solar down the side here to uh, a wiring trough with three disconnects. Two, there'll be 42 modules, 10.8 kilowatts on the Solark inverter and six panels, 1800 watts on the air conditioner. And so I'll be trenching from here to the house. I also found this gentleman has a well and I'm gonna try to fix it. It's got a busted casing, water. That is the water level of his well. So that's really awesome. So I'm gonna fix this thing so we can put a hand pump on it. And I'm gonna put a stub up a line so it'll have water because he has a bathroom and stubbed up in this corner. So a little off-grid water project while I'm here. Uh, they cleared the trees out that we asked them to. They might have to take a little bit more out in the morning sun. So I'm trying to see if I can get back far enough to see what the guys are doing on the roof. There's a lot of crud on the roof on the pine trees that were here. There, so we're Abraham and Nathan getting the lines snapped for these mini rail express. I'll show you those up close. Good 26 gauge metal, uh, red iron building, so it's pretty stout. 
he can walk on it without a problem. All right, so conduits run over and up in the house. And then we're gonna put a critical loads panel in this building. We're also, let me show you what we're gonna do in there. So in here, we have 12 lights and a couple not working, and we're going to uh, replace those. I brought lights with me. Uh, these will be complete LED fixtures, so it's cheaper to change out the entire fixture than to change these bulbs to bypass the ballast, which you can do. You can bypass the ballast and wire the socket and buy a comparable LED bulb, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna um, change out the whole fixture. So the end of the first day, we're starting to get the mini rail expresses up. So you'll see there are, we left three feet at the bottom. Unfortunately, we have good clearance around the entire array. So what's neat about this, this is our first one, so we're moving a little slow, that uh, there's no long rails. It's just laying them out there. And uh, you can basically fit the entire roof racking in one box. Screws, clamps, mid clamps, end clamps, rails, everything. It's pretty awesome to be able to bring the entire kit up on the roof. And you can see Abraham just spacing them out. All right, day two. First day was like a half a day here, but we got a lot done. All the rails, Mini Rail Express was put on. And then we're able to get out of here before dark. And this is a 10.8K plus six panels for a mini mini split, ACDC 12 mini split. All right, right now the guys are running home runs. I don't know if you can see that red, red wire coming down. We're gonna set a wire and trough out here. We're gonna have two, two runs off the roof. And we'll have three disconnects, but uh, two runs. And then we'll pick up over here and we'll get over to the, over to the house. I got a machine coming tomorrow. So the timing of everything is working out really well. Very thankful the rain is supposed to be 90% today. We're just working until we get kicked off the roof. So Abraham's running the, it's nice having the red and black PV wire now. Just makes it easy. Um, we're having to, taking, uh, we are using Y connectors. So we're paralleling two, two sets of nine panels. And uh, so that helps a lot in reducing, cuts the number of home runs in half, but you have to do a little bit of thinking and jumpering up on the roof under the panels. So these guys are getting the home runs and let's show you on the other end, we got the solar arc up on the wall and are starting to, to build that part of the system. Last night, I don't know if I mentioned it, we, customer wanted a, his well fixed. Somebody had drove over the casing and broke it. So. We dug down and cut it and added a bell and extended his well casing up so he can put a, at a minimum, put a hand pump in there. But I gave him a cap where he could put a submersible indoor hand pump. And we're going to trench in a, a water line. He has a bathroom in this corner here, stubbed in, some drainage and things. So we're going to bring water to that area as well. Okay. Um, that made me think we should probably drop in some wire. When there's a trench, there's a wire. Um, and that's it. So we got him set up for future electric pump or DC pump or whatever. And um, and capped off hand pump. He's going to probably end up sending him a hand pump. If he, I think that's his plan. Him and his son will put that in later. So. Day two, afternoon. So thankful that the rain held off. Top rung of this ladder looks so safe and inviting. Oh yeah, they're busting. <laughs> Johnny's tempted to go to the top and tippy toe on that top rung. <laughs> oh, see what happens. Thank see what happens you. when you're horsing around. All right, we're just taking um, our EMT up to the top for our home runs from the solar. Getting the pipes. Just always good to have two sets of eyes on top and on the side and uh, and then we'll be attaching them to those rails 
All right, and here comes the rain. Here comes the rain. Dang it. But we got a lot done, so. A little bit of rain tonight, then we'll uh, just trench her on out tomorrow. All right, we're here on day three. Sometimes we get into a lot of other things while we're on the site. And we go ahead and uh, make some upgrades, some updates, and we're putting in uh, LED shop lights, replacing these, I guess they're metal halide lights, I'm not exactly sure. But uh, Larry from Copperheads in his natural element up there, putting in some LED fixtures. These are super bright. And uh, just the lift just showed up. We were using that scaffold so he's happier now I should have done a video or before and after uh, but this is the final lighting setup for those LED change outs this is uh, it is so awesome in here it's much brighter just showing you some open panels critical loads panel on the right Mr. Copperhead Electric Larry Herman is getting it done Hey, <laughs> it's getting dark um, but he was Nice, nice enough to run all this pipe. So we just pulled the wires through, and we have this whole building. Plus, we put an RV connection out here, so the gentleman can actually hook up his RV. Um, if the grid's down, not a problem. Get the uh, two-inch conduit and the mobile home feeder. You can see the mobile home feeder hasn't been landed yet. We're gonna Polaris that can make that connection here. We've got three IMO disconnects. This is the solar coming off the roof. We have one array, second array, air conditioner. Before we button this thing up, we'll show you a little bit of our disaster area here. We um, got everything opened up. We're landing uh, all the feeds so we can turn the house. We're gonna put it in bypass and we'll finish the inverter tomorrow. We have a bypass transfer switch, a generator transfer switch. We have a mess and uh end of day mess. end of day four. Oh sorry Johnny to call your work a mess. Okay. All right, we're using a smart load feature here. You can see we're running a serious load here now with the house. Um we we've got the smart load output going out here. This is also a generator input or you can also AC couple in an inverter, which is kind of cool. So there's a lot of things you can do with this, but you can only do one of those things. All right, and here we have the next critical loads panel. There was a small Siemens panel in here. We ended up um, putting obviously the same size panel as this one, and we're about to move all these circuits over into this panel. This will be the critical loads panel fed by the Solark, and uh, and we also can bypass and feed it with grid as well. So these are about to be moved, and uh, so we got a lot of a lot of work to do. It's the end of day four, but we're we're getting it. So this project will have three critical loads panels fed by the inverter. We're also working on that he has a propane furnace. We're gonna put in a, a circuit in here that will allow the furnace to run and a grid down because it only needs a blower and it's because he's got propane. All right, part of a solar arc installation or is putting CTs or current transformers around the mains and that allows you to utilize the various modes on the solar using grid tie cell power to limited power to home limited power to load and time of use and so these are current transformers measuring um, power in and out of these mains to this panel so in cell back mode they're not really required um, unless you're coordinating with a whole house generator the other thing that I think Solarx made some improvements that they can actually detect a whole house generator and stop the grid tie cell mode without these CTs. But if, say, your utility is charging you or not giving you hardly anything for your power, you can stop the power from being exported to the grid by the, the CTs. Basically, it once the current starts flowing to the, it stops it from flowing to the um, to the um, grid and it just powers all your circuits so 
you're basically selling to your house, which you are anyway. Your house will consume all the power that your renewable energy system is using before it exports. But if you have extra power and you don't want to send it back because they're not giving you anything for it, then you can program like limited power to home. And the cool thing is you can use excess power to run some of the heavy loads, some of your double pole or your outdoor compressor condenser units can take that power and uh, use it. Not to run it in an off-grid, but in an everyday situation so you're maximizing your investment. And then here, it's just the critical loads panel. These are the, all the circuits that will run in this home or can run if the power goes out. Okay, so I'm just putting the CTs in. So we use a, a communication wire. We ran that from this panel over to this, where the Solark is in the garage. And we just use a jacketed four conductor, 18 gauge. No, those are 16, I think. Uh, wire and uh, we don't know how far we can actually go with that sometimes the CTs need to be placed a long ways away from um, the inverter so okay folks end of day five it's cleanup time batteries installed with the solar and we did some new tricks we used some of the smart load features well, Tom over at solar has been asking us to use this feature this is the first installation where we're really using it. Actually, not not true. I have one that was on the Canadian border where we're using it as well. So we're using the smart load as a way to heat the water in an electric water heater. We split the two elements in a standard electric water heater. And so we're powering the lower water heater using renewable energy through this diversion type load controller called the smart load. Very simple interface, it's telling you exactly what's going on at all times, what the solar's doing. It's dark, they're just not making any solar. Um, we got some grid, not a lot of load, but she's behaving just fine. We have a critical loads panel in here, and we have a bypass. We also have a generator transfer switch. There's some other features we wanted, the customer wanted to add to this garage, like one of the ACDC 12C mini splits from hotspot energy sorry about the flashlight and the lighting and uh you see the when this gentleman's transitioned the condensate line to the drain using a barb fitting made his own little coupling line set was a little short so he had to braze on uh some extensions there so i'm ready to fire this thing up on solar sorry no i was wondering what that i thought it was my flashlight Outside. We trenched. We saw that already. Now this is just getting wrapped up here. We've got a couple of disconnects and generator inlets. This is the generator inlet to charge batteries. It's got a little portable diesel generator. This is the AC power for the little hot spot one ton mini split. This is the DC disconnect for the hotspot one ton disconnect. So it's, yes, it is an AC DC. See the solar connectors? They will go into their solar connectors right here. So it has an AC and a DC power supply. Set it on a little base and she's ready to go. I wish we, wish we had some solar, we'd fire it up. It's almost ready to go. What do you, what, do you, what we're still working? Are you gonna fire it up? Don't ever buy a fuse disconnect again. Yeah, why? Because we have to borrow fuses from Keith? Or... He's kidding, boss. He's a great boss. I just had him in the shop. Uh, you know how you have this stuff kicking around forever and you just want to use it up? <laughs> She's going hot! Is she ready to go, Keith? Alright, it's a maiden voyage here. Do we even have a breaker in the panel for that? Yeah, man. This thing doesn't even want to... Who bought that? Oh, man. It's like... Bargain basement garbage. GE. How dare you? So just as I'm signing out, saying a few things, you know, we really like to do these systems. These systems are not just about throwing solar panels on your structures or on the ground, but it's about making a system work. This was a well casing that was broken off, run over. We got it fixed. We said, let's just go ahead and stub it up. I didn't know he had a bathroom and the corner of this stubbed up so we ran water and power and he can use this well in a backup situation might even tie it into his existing well 
So we, we like to make sure that you have water, power, hot water, all the electrical loads you, you need, and really think through the system and not just uh, slap some solar on him. Get out. I'm moving back here to see if we can see the solar. So, and if you need help with a system, I've talked to several people recently, we can get you the entire package. It's helping a gentleman right now walk through the almost identical installation right down to the fasteners to be used and the racking and the grounding techniques, bonding techniques, disconnects, conduits, all the moves it takes to get your house up and running. So, um, siting it, making sure the shading is good. I mean, lack of shading. Trees that need to be cut, that's what we did here when we first came. We just uh, made sure they cut the trees down so we can get some good production on this array. So 10.8K on the solar ar solar arc, um, and 1.8K on the air conditioner. And uh, that's it. So again, if you'd like a system and you want to tackle it yourself, we'd be more than happy, Johnny and I would gladly walk you through the uh, project. We can get you the materials. We can get you everything you need. Just let us know. Contact us at uh, info at practicalpreppers.com is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Thanks for watching.